So welcome back to my channel on Talking with Tisha. Today we're going to be talking about how God can hear even the tiniest whisper. And for those of you that know, that do pray, and know what it's like to have faith, you understand. I have always believed in God. I've always talked to him. I was always grown up Christian. You know, like went to Bible study with my great grandma, went to church all my life. I never knew what it was like to actually depend on God and give him all of me. I just went through the motions like everyone else. I prayed, I knew he was there. I knew that I was talking to someone, some higher being. But I always tried to do everything on my own. So at this point, if you can remember back when I said, I closed one door to open up a can of worms. It's true. When I closed the door to the old job, thinking that I'm going into something new, when I got that phone call from that doctor saying that I needed to have a craniotomy, I was flabbergasted. Can you believe me? And you know, when someone tells you that you have to have X, Y, and Z, you cannot believe it's you. I don't know about you, but I couldn't believe it was me. I heard it, but I kind of didn't hear it. And then when I started to process it, I said to myself, okay, God, please be with me. Please be with me. I kept praying to him over and over and over. Please be with me. I was praying to him out loud. I was praying to him in my head. I didn't know what to do. So of course I pulled over, let my girls go into the store. We all know it's called Five and Below. If you don't know, it's a store where you can get anything for $5 or less. And while I let them go into the store, I was calling whomever that said that they would be there for me if something came up. And I don't know if you know anything about family or friends saying they're gonna do something and then when it comes down to the point, they can't, I went through that. I called my dad. I called my aunts. I called my cousins. I called whomever I knew that had a car that would even pick up the phone and I told them that I needed to have surgery within three days. And this is where everything kind of opened up for me. My eyes opened up. It wasn't that they didn't want to be there. It's just that their lives were, I guess, important. Yes, my life is important as well. But you would think that people would just drop everything and be there for you. But don't think that way because people are human and some people will drop everything and be there for you, but some won't. But moving on, I, um, I kept praying and asking God. By the time I got home, I pulled into my driveway. My daughter was friends with this one girl whom she had stopped being friends with, but I still kept in contact with the parents. And they pulled up in my driveway, I mean, had to be like 10 minutes after, but before they pulled into my driveway, 10 minutes after I pulled up, my daughter got out of the car and she went to the mailbox. Normally I have to ask my kids to check the mail, but she went to the mailbox and she says, hey mom, we got mail. And I'm like, we got mail. She's like, yeah, me and my sister, we got mail. And she gave me the letter. She gave me the mail and ran into the house. And I looked at it and it was two food stamp cards. Now, I don't get food stamps. I hadn't gotten food stamps since my kids were five years old. There were two food stamp cards in the mail. I don't have regular news TV in my house because I try to keep that out of my house. So I didn't know that, I guess the government had been giving 
food stamp cards to people who was affected by COVID, whose kids had to stay home. And everyone had gotten their cards but me. And it's, it was kind of, to me, I wasn't thinking about, oh, it came at the time when I needed it. Because I'd pray to God and I'm like, okay, God, I don't have a job right now. I have to have this surgery. Where am I going to get money for food? That was the first question I asked him. Where am I going to get money for food? My second second question was, how am I going to get there? Who's going to take care of my kids? When I tell you God can hear anything you put out there in the universe, if you think it and you say it, he will provide for you. Two food stamp cards, each $200 a piece. Well, there was the food, so I didn't have to worry about that. Then 10 minutes later, someone pulls up to my house who my daughter doesn't speak to, and I speak to the parents who ha I haven't spoken to because I was going through some stuff with my medical issues that they didn't even know about. No one knew about but my dad and one of my aunts. But they pull up to give me masks for COVID that they had made. And I'm going over my story with them, telling them how I have to get to Miami. And I live three hours away from Miami, by the way. And they offered to give me a ride. There was my ride right there. Anytime you begin to worry about things, remember, fear not, God says. Fear not because I am with you. I am the light and I am the way. People, you have to believe in something. And if not believe in something, believe in God because he is your provider. He hears the tiniest whisper. When I got to Miami. Of course, we were masked in the car. I had no one with me. No one. Even if someone was allowed to come in and stay with me in the waiting room, I had no one to stay with me. Absolutely no one. People that said that they would be there for me were not there for me. I didn't know how to process that. I didn't know how to deal with that. I just knew that I was alone. And now when you look at it, Fast forwarding to now, I was never alone because God was with me every step of the way. I was terrified. I had that surgery. Fast forwarding to after the surgery, I'm at my new job. And remember from the first video, I found out that it was a tumor. I found out that it's cancer. Okay. Then I found that I have to call this place called OptumRx. For those who do not know, there are a specialty pharmacy that delivers medications to your home. I looked up the price of the medication. This new job that I'm at did not cover all of it. And I'm like, God, what next? How am I going to pay for this medicine that I need? He made a way. That same day I called them and I told them, I said, I cannot afford this. I don't know how I'm going to afford however much money it was. I don't remember, but it was a lot and I couldn't afford it. And I was barely making ends meet. I was barely getting back on my feet. This is after having brain surgery, working two weeks later. Now I found out I need to do chemo. And I'm like, I can't take off from work. Okay, they have pills. Okay, well, I don't know how I'm going to afford the pills. The lady said to me, well, ma'am, we haven't had any funding for a whole year now. It's going to take some time for us to get funding. So send us in all your legal documentation, all your tax records, everything. And we can see if we can get you a loan. And I'm praying to God the whole time. So I go home frantically looking through my garage where I keep all my tax papers and all my tax forms. And I find everything I need. The next day I go to work and I forget to send her the information. It slipped my mind. I was so busy at work and so busy with patients. I forgot about me. So right after lunch, I remembered, oh, I have to call these people and send them my information. So she sent me a voicemail saying that money had become available the very next day after not being available for a whole year. 
So I'm gonna play that message for you now. Hi, this is Teresa with Occupation Assistance Department. I'm just giving you a call um, in regards to copay assistance. We did have some funding that became available today. Um, I was able to get you signed up for copay assistance so you don't have to send back the application to me right now. Um, I was able to get you approved with um, Hand Foundation for $3,300. So you won't have a co-payment. If you want to order the medication, you'll just call into the pharmacy. Then so, like I said, God can hear the tiniest whisper. One day I call, the money is not available. There's no funding. They haven't been giving funding for a whole year. The next day, funding becomes available. The very next day, how I look at it is God was testing me because he says, fear not because I am with you. I had all my things together, ready to send it. And it slipped my mind. I just forgot about it. I stopped worrying about it. And the money was available the next day. Let's fast forward. I needed to have radiation now. And okay, great, something else, right? I had no clue that this is what case cancer patients went through. Now I need to have radiation. A woman that I barely knew next to me, I was just starting the job. She was always praying with me and for me. She's in the next room next to me. And I was in a group with her in the beginning. And I decided, you know, I can't be in this group because everyone in the group is talking about their divorce and their kids and I'm the only one in the group with cancer. So I can't be in this group because this group is not for me. But that didn't stop that group from putting money together for me. So around Christmas time, before my radiation, before everything, they put $1,000 together for me. I didn't want to accept it. She told me if I didn't accept it, I would be blocking their blessings. That's the only way they got me to take that money. So I'm thinking, okay, well now I have money because I have to go every six weeks to this doctor's. Now I have money to pay for my copay for the doctor. So not only do I have to go to the doctor for radiation, I have to go to the doctor for um, my oncologist you know and pay them a copay so many copays right let me tell you how god is good i get to the doctor that's going to do my radiation and i'm trying to give them the money and every time they kept saying no not right now and i'm like oh my gosh this money is just piling up because it's a specialist my specialist copay is 65 dollars, so it's going to keep piling up piling up piling up then in between i was seeing the neurologist they were taking the copays but this guy wasn't taking my money. And I'm like, okay, I need to figure out why. So I went to them, the nurse at the front desk. She was so sweet and kind. And I said to her, my money is, the money is piling up. I need to pay you guys something. And the, she pulled me to the side in the back. And she says, you know, the doctor has decided not to take any co-pays from you. That everything, every visit is going to be free. And I just was so happy because I didn't have it and God knew that I didn't have it. So the money that my coworker came up with paid the neurologist, well, the oncologist. And every step of the way, God has blessed me. So when you think God is not there, when you think he is not listening, when you think, why me? Because I've thought a lot of things. I've, all, I've thought a lot of things, you know. Why me? I don't drink. I don't, 
I don't drink as much, you know, or I, I don't smoke at all and I'm healthy and I'm in the gym working out all the time and why is this happening to me? I don't think why anymore. I just think to myself, what can I do to help others? And this is why I'm making this video. This is why I am putting all my information and all my business out there for everyone to see because I need to help someone out there that's dealing with being depressed from this diagnosis or maybe there's a family member that's being de that's depressed because someone in their family has this diagnosis maybe your dad has this diagnosis or maybe your sister or your cousin or your brother or someone's baby was diagnosed with this and you're just thinking why I can't give you an explanation as to why but what I can tell you is that God will hear even the tiniest whisper he knows your circumstances he knows what you're going through when I started that last job that I left I was there for 11 years the first time I got there I signed up for an Aflac policy everyone knows about Aflac the duck I signed up for an Aflac policy I just signed up for this policy to get money off my taxes so I picked it was three dollars and some change it's from what i can remember it was a cancer policy who knew that 11 years later i was going to need that cancer policy and not be able to afford the bills from the hospital i quit the job so you know i forgot that i had a cancer policy i forgot that this money was coming out of my check so finally when i come back after having my craniotomy I get a bill in the mail from Affleck saying that I owe them $44. And I was like, what? A bill? Affleck? It rem then it triggered me to, rem I remembered, oh crap, I have a cancer policy. So I called them and told them what the situation was and if I could get any money from, they said, yes, I needed to send in all my documents and I got a check. And that's how I was able to stay home for those six weeks to have my radiation. Do not give up. Don't give up. Life throws you, throws you curveballs sometimes. And sometimes we can catch those curveballs and sometimes we just move out of the way. <laughs> but this time, whatever life throws you, just take it head on. And don't be depressed and don't give up. When you're depressed and you give up, you sink into this stage where you can't even take care of yourself. And I think the only reason why I'm not giving up is because of my kids. I know that's the only reason. I'm not giving up is because of my kids. I have a life and I'm gonna fight for my life. Astrocytoma cannot take me out. It will not take me out. Thank you for listening. This is Talking with Tisha. Have a great day, everybody. And happy Sunday. Thanks for listening, guys, on Talk with Tisha. Please click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and follow. If you know anyone dealing with cancer or any type of cancer, you can share this video with them, and hopefully it will be uplifting and powerful. You can also follow me on TikTok and Instagram. Thank you for listening, guys. Thank you for being here for me, and I am here for you.